Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. First of all, I want to thank you so much. Uh, last video, I asked you to do me a favor, subscribe to 805 Road King to get him up to 100,000 subscribers. And within a couple hours, you, because you are so fantastic, shot him past 100,000 mark. He's now in superstar status and will be receiving, receiving his silver play button. And uh, that's a pretty big thing for a guy, for creators, you know, on YouTube to... Uh, to get to that point, it's it's not easy to get to. Although, it's funny, I did see there was one guy who had uh, one video out, and he had like 300,000 subscribers. And then he put out another video, but, you know, he, he only had less than three videos. He had like 300 and something thousand subscribers. And you know what it's about? He caught his wife cheating, and he was following her with a camera. So the first video, he says, you know, this is my wife cheating. He, you know, he's at a distance, and he's filming her, and the guy pulls up, and he's meeting her. And uh, and he goes, I'll keep you and post it. And everybody wanted to see what happened, so they all hit subscribe. That's pretty funny, right? Um, okay, so for today, a couple things I want to talk about. It's, uh, it's Wednesday. We're going to do a little bit of a mosh, but... Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, in response to a good friend of mine, Ben, from, uh, you know him as Tool Addict. He just did a video. He restored a nice vice. Um, the vice was a German vice, small vice. And what happened was he brought it to the sandblasters. When they sandblasted it, he got it back. And it was like, you know, a lot of pot marks. And it was a bad casting. And he was like saying, what, what's going on with this? But uh, he re re restored it nice. But I want to show you. Uh, talk a little bit about that, about how we can address poor casting or pockmarks, things like that in castings and, and whatnot. Let's get to it. Okay, many times you'll uh, pick up a vise like this beautiful uh, the Stanley number 700 that I use all the time. And uh, you might want to restore it. So you say, okay, I'm going to restore this and you're going to take it. And what happens, you strip it down. As you're stripping it down, all of a sudden... You know, this vice looks great. There's no voids, no... And all of a sudden, you strip it down. You get it down to bare metal. And you're using a grinder with it. And all of a sudden, you see little pock marks or holes. Like in this uh, nice little parker here. You see that parker? And you see this uh, void right here? Look uh, right there. See that void there? You'll find a couple of another one here. And you'll say, you know, where did these come from? What is going on? And... A lot of times that's because uh, they were filled in with some kind of material. You know, when you make a casting, you'll get air bubbles or voids. That's very common. You're not going to toss out a whole casting because of a little void here. If you have a bunch of them, you know, that's where the, you know, the person has to make the decision if they want to recast it and try again. But a lot of times if you just have small little voids, you'll just fill it in. And here's the question. What do you fill it in with? You know, cast iron is very hard to weld. Uh, if it's a forged item, sometimes you can weld, you can put a spot of weld, but a lot of times if it's an area here and you got a little pockmark, it's not structurally uh, important. You can put Bondo and that's what they use. They use some kind of filler and that's what we're going to talk You've about. Never today. used auto Bondo or auto body filler. Uh, you're in for a treat because this is something everybody should add to their bag of tricks. And, and it's, uh, it's so easy to use, but there's kind of a mystery to it. And I'm about to take the mystery out for you. Now, first of all, this is the type of packaging you would find at maybe like an auto parts store, like a Pep Boys or an AutoZone or something like that, because they come for the average homeowner. But if you went to a regular auto body supplier, you would buy it. It would come probably a 3M can and you would buy different ones. They have polyester. They have all different types of resins. But this is your basic Bondo that you want to use. It's called an all-purpose Bondo, all-purpose putty. And it comes with a little lid here. And in the lid comes the hardening cream, okay? Now, if you buy it from an auto parts store, uh, 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 rather a... Uh, a auto paint supplier, then you'll be buying, you know, the cream hardener will come in a different tube, but usually the same brand, 3M or whatever. You try and stay with the same brand. And uh, this is so great because you could use it on so many things, metal, wood, concrete. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't know how great this is. And, and uh, it's basically all it is. It's like a two-part uh, epoxy that has some filler in it. I'm going to show you the basics of how to use it, and, and once you start using this, you're going to love it. Okay, first off, uh, always a good idea to put a pair of gloves on if you're working with this, and also have a well-ventilated area because it could smell a bit. Unfortunately, my uh, my product here is uh, drying out a little bit. That's why I'm doing this. I'm going to use a little bit. I want to get a new can, and then I'll throw this away. And it's uh, So when you open up the can, you're going to see that uh, it should be a little bit more liquidy than a little bit more... Uh, 
a better viscosity than this. This is a little bit hard, you know, dried up already. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to mix up your can from the bottom up or mix up the the actual bondo and mix it up and from the bottom up get this mixed up before you take it out and put it onto your your plate well i'm going to okay mix it next up. up now that you have a small portion you take out and we're going to work with this it's about three inches around about a half an inch high uh that's about the portion that you want to use at a time and a lot of guys like to use these uh these body panel mixtures you know these things are great these uh screw you can get them anywhere they come in uh uh, six or eight or ten to a pack and they're really good uh, You can use a putty knife a lot of you will have a putty knife at home and things like that And you clean all this up with lacquer thinner so that's good to have on hand But what you want to do now is you want to make sure you're going to be mixing it on something Some guys use cardboard but cardboard's not the best option because cardboard tends to absorb some of the resins in the body filler So you're better off you having one of these you ever see these these uh these are uh, low-cost uh, cutting boards. They're real thin. You can get them all over the place. Or a piece of an old piece of plexiglass will work. You know, it's easily to clean up and think anything that doesn't absorb any of the resin. Um, then you're going to take your your hardener and uh, you're going to knead the package or the the as the container and you're going to mix it up good because what happens is when this sits like everything else things separate. So if you only used it a couple days ago, you don't have to go through this. But I haven't used this in over a year, so you knead it up good. And then when you're you're satisfied that it's all mixed up, I was doing this off camera. You uh, unscrew it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a bead of this. It comes in different colors a lot of times. So come in red or blue, which is good. But this one is, is a white one, not so great. We're going to put a bead diagonally across here like this. Okay, just like that. That's enough hardener right there to activate it. Now we're going to mix it up. And when you're mixing it, you don't want to swirl it because you don't want to put air bubbles into this mixture. Because air bubbles are always a problem. And about what you want to do is you want to squeeze it down like this and mix it through. And, and just keep mixing it back and forth. And I'll show you what that looks like. And turning it over and, uh, and working it through. And again, this is a little bit dry. It's going to be a little bit easier with yours. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, now what's nice about the different contrasting color cream hardeners is that you could see if you mixed it all the way through. See, with the white, it's very hard to tell, but I know from, from doing it for a while, but uh, if you would put, let's say, a blue, it would come out a light green, and you could see if there's any streaks of the hardener. But, okay, now this is it. It's all ready to go. You only have about 10, 15 minutes tops before this hardens up, so... We're going to fill in a piece of uh, wood. We got some holes. Let's okay, do that. Okay, here's some of the uh, holes that we have in this wood. We're just going to fill these in. Okay, we're about uh, 10 minutes in. And look, see this? It's unworkable. It's already started to harden up. And that's the beauty of this, that it dries so quick. But you can see here... It's already starting to harden up and it's, you know, only, like I said, it really, in about an hour, this thing will be like rock solid. So it's the beauty of it, but you got to work quick. And that's why you make small batches, because if you make a big batch, this all goes to waste. Now to clean up your tools, if you use something flexible like these body scrapers, a lot of times when they get dry, you just bend it and they'll crack right off. But uh, sometimes, like here, you scrape off any excess that you could get from here, throw this out. And then what I like to do is just dump a little lacquer thinner on here. And I have a piece that's just scotch, you know, this is a that uh, cleaning pad, any kind. You can use a, a scotch bright. You can use this. And I'll show you how quick it comes off the tool. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to dump a little, again, this you need gloves for. You don't want lacquer thinner on your skin. And uh, just just give it a little rubbing like this, not crazy, but uh, this will get rid. This will soften up the the bo body filler because it didn't uh, totally dry yet. But uh, you can see how quickly that that works through there. Clean it up like this. You're gonna wipe that off with some paper towel. And for your pad here, like this, just gently go around it. Don't scrub too hard. Just gently go around. It'll take off all the finish. And then use a piece of paper towel wrap that right up and you can see it takes it right off of here and you can reuse this over and over again 
this stuff, these things, you can get them, uh, any kind of cutting board, but if you're going to use a cutting board, make sure it's kind of a smooth one. Don't get the one that's pebbled finished. Okay, next up, uh, while the Bondo dries, I thought we'd talk about something different. My mentor, you've heard of him before on the show, Dan Semmel, he is restoring a Chatillion scale. And uh, John Chatillion in uh, 1835 started a uh, scale company over here in New York, and uh it's been going for nonstop. It's still in business, but uh, for 175 years, it was in New York, and they just moved down to Florida within a decade or so. And uh, he made spring scales. He made later on force gauges, things like that. And it's a very interesting subject because when you think about a spring scale, a lot of times they weren't uh, legal for trade because a spring can stretch out over time or also was affected by cold and heat and stuff. And and uh, Chatillion was one of the... Uh, premier scale makers that overcame that and he has patents and things that his scales were very accurate so let's take a look at what we got so let's talk about it for a while it should be now, some fun. i have a bunch of scales because i've always been interested in them but now with the digital scales with the load cells a load cell is a uh, a device that will uh through electricity will tell how something how much something weighs and and uh, they kind of put these right out of business because they're so accurate and so inexpensive to make but years ago the, this was it. This was the cat's pajamas. And you can see here, this one here is a, a Chatillon, uh, New York. And you can see it's an early one. And you can see how, how nicely it's made. First of all, it's uh, it's brass. You know, you can see it's made of brass. And you can see the little arrow with the little screws, how it's held on there. And when you pull this down like this, and you pull the arrow travels down, and you can see the mechanism, the, the uh, spring in there. You see that? And uh, we'll test it out and see after... A hunt just got to be 100 years old or so. We'll see how this uh, performs. We'll give it a test. And, and here's another one. Like I said, I got a bunch of these around the house. My, we, we always had them around the house. I don't know if they used them to weigh fish. I don't know what we had them for in my house. But this one here, as you can see, it's an Excelsior improved spring balance sergeant and company USA. And this one here, you can see is in pounds too. And you can see when you pull this, this one goes to 50 pounds, right? Yeah, fi uh, 50 pounds. Look out, you know, you really got to pull on this too. So we'll test this one out to see how accurate it is next to my load cell scale. And and uh, then we'll clean them up and we'll have some fun. This looks like uh, these are very interesting. And and you know what? They have uh, they are quite collectible, especially the Chatillion. Okay, so here's our modern crane scale. Now, because of the range, this is made for heavier weights. I don't know how accurate it is down the low rates, like around four or five pounds. But what we have here is, uh, I have this wrench we're going to put on here. It's a rigid wrench. I'll show you the setup. I'm going to put it on like just like that. And you can see how it's just hanging freestyle there. And you can see what it's going to say here. It says, uh, it says 418. 4.18 pounds is just over 4 pounds, 4 ounces. And uh, let's see what the Chatillion 100-year-old scale says. Now the graduations here you can see are 1 ounce graduations. There are 16 graduations between each number and there's a half uh, number there so let's see what it says on on this okay part. here's the spring scale as you can see now i'm going to hang the same wrench from the bottom of the spring scale let it come down and see what it weighs in at and you can see the scale there here's where the arrow is okay and you can see it is between four and four and a half but uh this will give you an exact reading it's very you can see how it's graduated. You can really get a, a decent reading on there. Okay, next up to check the, uh, it's about 17 and a half pounds, this vise. We'll check it on the other spring scale. Okay, look at this here. Six, you see that the numbers, the graduations there? And check out the setup here. Okay, we have this hanging just like this off of the, off of that scale. And look how close that is after a hundred years, huh? 17 and a half now, pounds. Now normally to check the accuracy of these scales you would have a, a, a few standards going through the range you know one two three four five pounds and you would check it at each range to see how it does but I'm very impressed that these things even come that close and uh, now obviously something like this an antique you wouldn't want to you know destroy by cleaning it up so what do you say we clean this up and uh, the one thing you want to remember is that when you're dealing with brass and stuff, especially an antique like this, you do not want to go to to the uh, belt sand or something like that. You can wire wheel the, the uh, clips up here. 
the little rings because they're probably a steel brass cut steel but as far as the body that you have to go with a, a soft fiber wheel so let's see how we can make this look and we'll polish it up Okay, if you look at the top of the scale, this is just the way it comes off the fiber wheel. It's a satin finish, but if we go down here, I took it to the buffer and I buffed out the bottom. You can see the difference. It's a little more, uh, has a little more luster to it. I prefer this one. Okay, here we are. The Bondo is dry. These are the, uh, the two pieces that we did here. You can see they're, they're dry, they're hard. Uh, they can be drilled. That's one nice thing about you. You could drill it, you could shape it, you could sand it. Look how nice that drills. Look at that. Look at that beautiful hole. You know, like I said, you can pound it. I mean, it's hard. It's durable. As strong as it is, what it isn't is flexible. So you don't want to use this on anything that might have some flex to it because, you know, it could break and things like that. Here is the wood we did, the holes we filled in. Look at that. Beautiful. I mean, you could paint. You wouldn't even know it's there. If you do a good job, and now this is just Bondo. There's a secondary step that you're supposed to do after you do Bondo, and that's called a glazing putty. Uh, we used to use nitro stand or whatever and and that's where you know that takes out any of the pinholes that you might get in the bond or whatever but you see like that little dimple there that we didn't so that glazing putty you don't have to mix that with any filler it comes right out of a tube and that gets anything from like a sixteenth of an inch or less so you really got to try this stuff if you haven't used it put it in your your mental lineup okay we're calling this project done look how nice this came out huh what a nice what a beautiful piece of artwork this would be, huh? You can see here, obviously, you know, when you use, the way to do this is obviously with that uh, fiber wheel and then go over it with a little polish. You can, you could polish this up that it would be a total mirror finish. I left it to a kind of a satin, but you could make this into, uh, you know, you know how brass is, but painted the little arrow red again. So it's, uh, it's all back to factory the way it would, would have looked probably when it was new. And uh, I'm sure these things were not so expensive, but I'm sure they were more expensive than uh, lesser models because, uh, like I said, this was a good brand. Chatillion was a uh, was a quality brand, and they were known throughout throughout the world, I think. And um, this one came out really nice. What do you think? If you want to see me do that one, let me know. One other thing, I did the inside here so it's super smooth when this goes up and down now. And that won't affect accuracy because, like I said, the spring is what controls that. So this is just the smoothness and how it works. You know, it's really nice when something's polished up like that. Okay, so in closing, uh, I hope you uh, try that Bondo. If you haven't used Bondo before, you know, it's we all have a mental lineup of tools that we use and supplies that we use. And... You know, it's always nice to be uh, to throw something else into the mix. And if you ever get a casting or anything that has pock marks or, or things you say, I can't sand it down that far, and you're going to paint it, you know, fill it in with the Bondo. It's it's an excellent stuff that's been used for, for many, many years. And thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.